But this receivers are going to be the biggest shakeup. So I'm really going to just focus and laser in here because uh, there have been some big shakeups here. The guy that I, I've already always been all in on, but even more so these days, is Elijah Moore. He's playing every receiver position now with the ones. It started out with Cam with the twos. You got a little dip that you can buy in. Now he's with the ones, even with Crowder. That was kind of the thing is like, well, Crowder and him are going to split slot snaps, and Crowder's pretty good. So, you know, that's going to be an inconsistent. No. Crowder's got the slot. Moore's playing outside. Moore will move inside. They move, they're kind of moving their guys all over the place. Love it. And every single day, there's a new highlight reel, whether it's on Twitter and you see the video, or whether it's a beat writer's pick. Like, My God, this guy's a baller. You know, Robert Mays from The Athletic just visited them and talked about him on the, the uh, show and said he's going to be such a huge piece of their offense based on the way they're moving them all over the place and the different receiver positions they have him playing. So Elijah Moore is insane. How high do we have him? Well, you can see I bumped him up to wide receiver 30 or 40 right here, right after you know, Visca, Chenault, and I, Cooks is – what's the QB situation, right? And not that Zach Wilson's that much of a upgrade, but you can see I bumped him over Fuller. Waddle's going to get a bump up. We'll talk about uh, in a little bit. In fact, I'm going to bump him over – not Elijah Moore. I'd rather have Elijah Moore. But I bumped him over Curtis Samuel. I love Elijah Moore. I am all in. Love the rookie connection. Love the nonstop highlight reels out of camp. He's my guy. Another guy with nonstop highlight reels, though, is CeeDee Lamb. We had RJ Achoa on for a Cowboys preview. If you haven't heard it, all of it's on YouTube or in our um, podcast, Fantasy Fullback Dive with Baby Path 2020 titles, reviews, 2021 titles, reviews and subs. So appreciate it. But CeeDee Lamb has apparently been unstoppable. They're saying, our, this is what RJ said. It's like Des Days, we used to call him, where this receiver comes in and just cannot be stopped. No matter what you try to do, you can double him, triple him. This guy's coming down with the ball. He's a next level type of player, Achoa was saying. Everything tells me that he's going to blow up. And all the Achoa is not the only one. They're all, all the reports are. So I have bumped him up all the way up to wide receiver 12, early third round range, above Amari Cooper. That would seem insane because Amari Cooper saw 49 targets in the games with Dak, whereas CeeDee Lamb only saw 28. But guess what? CeeDee Lamb was only 93%, 93% of his snaps came in the slot. So he would come out the field on two receiver slots. He only played 65% of the snaps last year. And still, when Dak was healthy, was the wide receiver 12. I talked to Acho, and he was like, there's no way they'll ever take him off the field this year. He's absolutely expanding his route tree and his ability to play multiple positions. CD Lamb is going to be a fucking monster, guys. Oh, especially if Dak's healthy and his offense is hucking it like they were. I mean, again, they were on pace to shatter records for passing yardage last year. You got to like CD Lamb, unstoppable in camp so far. Another receiver, tons of positive buzz in camp is Terrace Marshall. Now, I, I had bumped him up a little bit, but not nearly as high as I think he needs to go. Yeah, down here at 60. Let's get him where he belongs. Uh, Hardman's going to be getting a bump up, but I I like Marshall, honestly, even above Pittman. Um, he's dominating in the slot. They're force-feeding him is the quote, and part of that's to get his rookie wings under him, but the slot part of it is where I'm very, very intrigued. And why? Well, it's because Sam Darnold absolutely loves to pepper his slots. A big slot? Ooh. Deontay Burnett in college, 27 and a half target share. Quincy and Newton with the next year, his first year uh, as a professional, Sam Darnold, 21.7%. Jamison Crowder, 26.1% in 2019. Jamison Crowder, 25.3% in 2019. And when Crowder was out, Braxton Burrios, 27.5%. He religiously peppers the slot. And I know part of that's Adam Gase's offense. It's always been you know, Landry, whoever it has been, has got peppered. <clears throat> Those first two names – happened before Adam Gase's horrendous regime, right? So part of it, I think, is a player tendency in addition to the play calling tendency. And I also love that Joe Brady had Terrace Marshall when they played at LSU. He had, I think, 12 touchdowns that year. Was a beast alongside Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase. And he went out and got his guy in round two. I like it. There's a big, big shower narrative there. And that's part of why I think I'm a little bit lower on DJ Moore. Whoever asked that question is 
This regime likes Terrace Marshall a ton. So he's been a big riser in my rank so far. You already saw Jalen Waddle, who I had bumped up pretty high. Uh, I'm going to eliminate this tier because I'm starting. There's a lot of overlap, and then I'll, I'll cut it off eventually. But Waddle has been the only receiver available. We've had Will Fuller on the PUP all camp. Parker just got activated. Fuller, of course, got hurt the first fucking day. What a ass wipe. Uh, and Waddle has been just dominating in camp. Oh, man. They're saying they're using him on jet sweeps. They're using him on screens. He's playing inside. He's playing outside. In the early camp notes uh, that, you know, he was he, they were worried about his shoulder or something, his surgeries, <clears throat> that he would never be the same. And I don't know where that came from. I, I was trying to find it. I think it got taken down because everything since then has been this guy has been dominant. So, yeah, I, I'm in on Waddle. I'm, I'm ready for him to blow up. I do would rather have Antonio Brown. Uh, he's, he's a little too low in my rankings. They're saying he is just going bananas in camp right now. Uh, I do think Landry's a little undervalued there. But as you can see, I did bring Waddle up quite a bit. And I'm going to now, I think there's like a teardrop here. That's a little too high for Mikey Dubs. And I did bump up Tyler Boyd because we'll talk about Jamar Chase and his struggles. Uh, Chase is not looking like the true alpha. He's struggling to gain separation. They're saying there's days you see the freakish ability, the reason you drafted him at five. But then there's other days he's just kind of disappearing, or so the reports say. Um, I'll find the exact quote here. Chase. Yeah, they're just not on the same page with what he's expected to do. Now, again, it's it's early, right? Jefferson had two dud weeks and then led the set of rookie record for receiving yards. I'm not, especially in Dynasty, I'm not going to overreact, right? But, you know, I might rather have T. Higgins now. I might rather have Brendan Ayuk now. Yeah, I might react to that level. Maybe not DJ Moore. We're going to talk about Galladay, who is unfortunately going to be getting a bump down uh, momentarily. But yeah, Chase, like, maybe he's going to come along a little bit slower. Maybe we do have to adjust our expectations just a smidgen, right? Just a smidge. Uh, let me go back now. Ruggs and Edwards were the next guys I wanted to talk about. Uh, and John Brown, in, in light of that. They're both running with the ones well ahead of John Brown is what the reports are. Uh, Ruggs, that was kind of expected. Apparently, he's added 13 pounds of muscle. And now that's big. I just actually talked with great interview. Hasn't been released yet, but Ted Wen of the athletic awesome, brilliant film analysis, FB underscore film analysis. If you haven't followed him, you haven't read his work, go do so now. Don't even listen to my podcast anymore. Like this, that guy is far smarter than I will ever be. One of the best breaker down like the analysis of the X's and O's looking at film and, and telling you how to analyze it. Love the guy. He, he did a big say. Like, Why didn't rugs pan out? I mean, this guy was, the first pick of receivers in the class of C.B. Lamb, of the class of Jerry Judy, Justin Jefferson, yet he finished eighth among rookie receivers in, in receiving yards. Had one game above 100 yards. Five games with eight or fewer yards. Only never had a game with more than three receptions. Essentially, he did nothing, right? Why? He struggled really big against the press. And he never had time to establish a rapport with Derek Carr. Now he adds 13 pounds of muscle supposedly to help with that pre those press struggles. That's what the team told him to do. And apparently him and Derek Carr have been lights out together, whether it's deep, whether it's short and screens, like it, it, apparently he's just a, a different receiver. And the, he's the kind of guy that probably needed the training camp more than a pro ready Justin Jefferson, right? He needed that time to get acclimated to the NFL level, the NFL corners bashing him at the line. And so now he's finally had a little bit more of that. I think he could be a big rise up. So I like Ruggs a lot more than I did. I'm going to bump him up to this range. Some of these guys are going to be moving down too. Um, McCall Harmon will be moving up. <clears throat> and then I don't know if I even have Edwards. I was so fed up with him last year. But the fact that he's running with the ones – I, I have to pay attention to. I mean, this guy is built. 
hyperbole, but like Terrell Owens and Randy Moss, he has that build and that speed. And he was an absolute alpha in college. At the, you know, and he got hurt. But yeah, I I had to give him a, a shooting him up the board, as you can see. Uh, that might be a little aggressive. I might do more so like this range underneath Marvin Jones, who I love as a player. Um, but you can see like I he belongs high up there. Whereas John Brown, like, is he even draftable at this point? Give me Deshaun Jackson, who's gonna probably blow up for a few more big weeks. Um so if those guys continue to run with the ones, I'm going to absolutely love it. I do think this tier would be like kind of like this. There's going to be some guys that drop out of that, maybe a couple guys that jump in. We'll find out. Uh, but Ruggs and Edwards running with the ones needs to be noted. Another guy that I, I want to talk about is McCole Hardman. I'm going to have the exact guy that wrote this report on tomorrow, 11 a.m. It will probably drop the next day or two. Chiefs reporter Nate Taylor from The Athletic reports Harmon has made a sizable improvements, whether it's route running, consistency when catching the ball, or just overall demeanor on the practice field. The light switch went on, it sounds like. This guy is getting it. And the sky has always been the limit for McCole Harmon with that insane speed. Only Tyreek Hill might be the only receiver faster at the NFL than this guy. Insane speed. And when he's been used, I, what is it? Mahomes, I think, has the highest passer rating of any quarterback in the NFL when targeting McCall Hardman. So it's not like it's been completely fruitless. When he's gotten used, he's been good. It's just been a matter of how often is he on the field, about a half and half player. On more traditional routes, they bring in like a Ping Pringle or a Robinson. But right now he's listed as the number two receiver. Came out yesterday on the first team depth chart. He's played as the number two wide out throughout camp. And he's just looked like the number two receiver. Now, never mind if something actually ever happened to Tyree Kill and this guy ascends to the number one. I mean, you're looking at a high end two, maybe a maybe even a low end one. So there's like handcuff upside here, but there's upside of this guy just completely dominating as well. So I'm gonna bump him above. I, he, I think he belongs, if not in this tier, like leading this tier, the next tier off. Uh, and I think Waddle kind of belongs in that same, like these guys I could, you know, start right away. These other guys I'd like to stash, but they're my flex. I can probably get by. Uh, so McCole Hardman though, rocketing 10 spots up the board to wide receiver 44. Now with these reports, a clear number two in the chiefs offense didn't yield much for Sammy Watkins, but Sammy Watkins wasn't given him much to work with. Love these reports. Next one up is Darnell Mooney within the same tier. Mooney's been quote unquote on fire with his routes, uh, just dominating early on in camp. And you, you'll see Fuller dropping. You're going to see Curtis Samuel dropping. These are some injuries that have just been, you know, not allowing these guys to get going. So Mooney though, it's been on fire. Now I've already emphasized this, but I want to reemphasize it. Last year he saw 22 deep targets. 15 of them were deemed uncatchable. That's 70%. The 17% completion rate on his deep targets were the sixth worst in the NFL. This is a blazer who runs a 4-3-8-40, but also can play pretty big for his size. Like, not bad in contested catches. So now that he's running a fuller route tree, is the clear-cut number two. Anthony Miller's been shipped away. No real competition for number two duties. And Justin Fields comes in completing nearly 60% of his deep passes last year behind only Burrow and Mac Jones in these past two seasons, six best of the last five years in deep passing. The fact that this guy is running a more complete tree, not only just going to have that deep ball boost from Justin Fields, but also, and even Andy Dalton's going to be better than what he was dealing with last year for whatever he starts for. Love everything about Mooney. Love this guy. Uh, I think he could explode as a sophomore. Very, very intriguing uh, rise for him. Absolutely. And we, we're talking about Sammy Watkins, who kind of sucked with the Chiefs. Well, looks like he is the number one guy right now for the Ravens for a couple reasons. One, Rashad Bateman, unfortunately, and we're going to bump him down now. Uh, he got hurt. Now, we don't know what it is yet. It, it, he was running a route on a slant. He just crumpled to the ground. 
uh, very noticeable limp as he worked out his way off to the field. Does not sound good at all, at all. Could be an ACL, could be a hammy, but we'll know more. Can't speculate, but he's probably going to be missing some time. So we have to bump him down. Ah, I mean, right? Like, I can't take any of these other guys. I, I'm, I'm going to bump up Crowder a little bit, too. Um, undervalued, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but, yeah, without Bateman. So even when Bateman was playing, they were saying Sammy Watkins – was the most impressive receiver in camp. Uh, so let me bump him up. Like without Bateman, T.Y. Hilton, you know, the, the quarterback injuries, right? Like these Colts guys, I just don't want anything to do with right now. Like Michael Pittman can drop. Um, I am going to put Sanders into this next year. But Watkins, let's get back to the, the man of the hour. <laughs> Everybody's most interested in Sammy Watkins. He's, quote, already, even with Bateman on the field, the best wide receiver at training camp. Greg Roman, his offensive coordinator, came out and took that further, said he's one of the best receivers in the NFL, period. <laughs> Outlandish, yes, absolutely. But last time these two were together, Greg Roman and Sammy Watkins, was with the Bills in 2015. Watson played 13 games, caught 60 balls, 1,047 yards, 9 TDs in 13 games. That would have been a 1,288-yard, 11 TD season. He would have been the wide receiver 2 or 3 that year. And now they're reunited. He's got Lamar, who's worked all offseason on his deep passing. You know you're going to get the week one blow up, right? I think Sammy Watkins could be a sneaky surpriser this year, depending on Bateman's injury, of course, because I do think Bateman was ready to be the alpha. But Watkins might be, I don't really like Watkins, the player, but he still might be the best receiver that Lamar Jackson's ever played with. Like Marquise Brown, in his role, is very, very good at deep threat, field stretcher, take the lid off. But in terms of like a complete could work the middle areas of the field, Watkins can do that. He hasn't really had that yet, Lamar Jackson. And, and Watkins might become that go-to guy. So I'm I'm a big fan of Sammy Dubs. A guy I did not have ranked at all, and now we'll need to bump into this tier of receivers is Randall Cobb. But the Houston, I didn't didn't care, didn't need to know. But with Green Bay, especially with an Aaron Rodgers clamoring to get him, wants his guys, wants the people he knows and is comfortable with. Randall Cobb has to get in there. So let me bump him in. And let's see where he goes. I see a ton of questions and comments coming in. I cannot wait to see what you guys got brewing over there. Um, let's bring Cobb up. I would say in this range, like near Crowder. It's uh, certainly above Lazard, who would have been the two. I, I don't know that you can – it's Randall Cobb at the end of his career, the twilight of it. But the, these guys did have insane chemistry. If it gets rekindled – Cobb would belong, you know, up here with these guys. So as, as a last round stab, I really like what Cobb could bring to the table. I, there's there's a lot of just depth in the the middle, you know, who could become wide receiver three range. No real alphas down here, but a lot of intriguing players in these these picks. Uh, so I'm definitely interested in Randall Cobb now that he has joined Aaron Rodgers, as you saw, wide receiver 60-ish or so. You know he's going to end up finishing on wide receiver 40, 45, a higher floor. Just the ceiling. I think mean, there's guys ahead of him that have a higher ceiling. Now we got to figure out what to do with Michael Thomas. First, he delays the surgery. I, this is a tricky situation because there's reports coming out that the Saints forced him to play, even though he probably should have been rested and sat last year as they went all in for the title. And – that that's not being covered according to Michael Thomas. Right? He has this Instagram post, like you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. I'm not here to speculate on who's right, who's wrong in the situation. All I know is this. He's not returning the team's calls. He had the surgery pretty damn late. It seems to me like he's trying to get laid up on the company's time, company's dollar. Like I got hurt in the work time. I'm going to do this now. He said he was seeking a second opinion, but then just failed to report back what that second opinion said. And they're pissed, rightfully so. I'm at the point where I don't really know I'm going to draft Michael Thomas this year. That could come back and bite me in the ass, but like, 
uh, he would have to be at the bottom of this tier. Because I really would be happy to start anyone here. If you get down here, I can see, you know, why you'd want to go Thomas. But at wide receiver 56, I won't be getting Michael Thomas. That's the sad part of it. If we get, you know, reports his timetable has sped up, he's back with the team, everything has changed in his mindset, well, then okay. But I'm reading the tea leaves. This looks like an Antonio Brown. Like, you're just not going to get anything out of this guy. He's just going to be a diva. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's him. It wasn't him coming into the league. He's I, That wasn't Brown coming into the league, though, either. I don't like anything about that situation. He's become a do not draft for me where people are typically going to be willing to make that reach. Now, in – you know, his stead here, do I have Callaway on the wide receivers? Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to now bump up to Callaway. He has all the reports. I mean, wait till you hear some of these words, and then we'll, we'll figure out where we want to rank him. The breakout star of Saints camp, to the point where there's a belief inside the building, the offense will be just fine without Michael Thomas. Taysom Hill was saying, this guy doesn't – lose in any rep like he goes out and attacks it at 100 percent speed and he's always winning all the buzz has been about him the breakout star of camp called him they're saying luke johnson of the new Orleans advocate that marquez callaway has taken ownership of being the top dog at receiver top dog baby gotta love it the alpha now, it takes some hell of quarterback does it really matter well he, he was peppering don't forget you know michael thomas over those, he had his wide receiver one that he really liked and locked in on, and it sounds like for him that's Callaway right now. So I'm bumping Callaway up big time. I think I might be psycho here, but like I think he belongs right alongside Michael Thomas. Uh, I, let's see him play. We'll put him in this tier below. But that's an upside guy I'm going to be taking. He's going to go at the end of all, all your drafts. I'm going to take him in every single draft. I hope his price doesn't rise too much. He might have a huge preseason game, and then people will wake up. I love Callaway, though. Uh, he's one of those guys that has truly, truly emerged over the last four weeks. Cortland Sutton. Now, this is one that I'm on the fence with. For a while, they were saying he's still holding back. Well, that makes sense. It's kind of like Burrow. I don't think we need to punish a guy that's coming off an ACL tear that's having a little bit of hesitancy, right? And that that was about a week ago. And in since then, they've said, looks a little bit more assertive. Looks like he's coming back to full speed, rounding back into form. Looking like his explosive self are some of these reports coming in. So to me, this guy, I had him bump down yesterday. I'm going to bump him back up, I think, to right around here. This guy defines alpha. Uh, he was, what, just a couple seasons ago, 1,112 yards, 72 catches, 6 TDs, top 20 receiver in fantasy. And, yeah, the ACL is kind of concerning, but hear this study. Since through 2013, 2016, 20 NFL receivers with ACL tears were studied. Six never returned to action. Those were over age 27. Seven receivers saw their production decline. They were average age 28.4. But seven receivers saw their production actually improve. They were age 25.2. Sutton's 25 right now. So he's got the age on his side. He's got the work ethic. Everybody, anybody's ever talked about Sutton only raves about his work ethic. So he's got that going for him. I bet you he's physically good. It's just more of a mental thing. And he's starting to get those. He's making those plays. He even said, you know, I'm going to make those acrobatic catches. I'm hitting the ground. And it's like helping my confidence a little bit. So that's that's important. That's impressive. Uh, it, it's good to see. Another later round sleeper, Diami Brown. Getting, oh, so he's not even in my rankings. I got to make sure that changes real fast. Uh, Diami Brown of the Washington football team has been playing the slot and looking explosive daily. They're saying it's a higher like real play deep down the field every single day. Uh, manning the slot, which he didn't do a ton of in college, but this guy has 4 3 speed. Not the biggest guy, uh, but plays big for his size, can leap, can really do it all. He's, to me, more interesting in best ball where I don't have to predict his blow-up weeks. I can't really imagine, you know, with Terry McLaurin there, with Curtis Samuel eventually there, potentially there, uh, that Diami's going to be all that involved. But 
he's going to have some spike weeks because he's going to play that role of field stretcher. And we know Ryan Fitzpatrick is more than willing to let it uncork time and time again. Um, so I like Diami. I'm going to kind of cut this tier. Right here at Lazard. Now I might bump some people above him. Um, but I really like Diami Brown. I think he's plenty explosive. I, I might I might cut this here actually and have him start the next tier and like have a, a Gabe Davis right alongside him. Um, but Gabe Davis did get a bump down, and Sanders is getting a, a nice bump up here because Sanders has been the clear number two for the uh, Buffalo Bills here throughout camp. He's making highlight plays. He's meshed really well with Josh Allen, Josh Allen style. So Emmanuel Sanders gets a little bit bumped there. Um, but Diami Brown, very explosive, great best ball type of guy. And then other than that, I've got a couple other quick notes. Like Denzel Mims is playing third stringer, hopeful for a trade. No need to draft him ever again, and unless he gets traded. But you know he's off my list. You can see 94. I'm giving a shit about him. Uh, Travis Fulgham. It's apparently making a ton of highlight plays with Devonta Smith out. So I'm going to kind of bump him up a little bit as a best ball guy. Um, Nikhil Harry has been the Pats' best wide receiver by a wide margin. I read that and I was like laughing. And then uh, another report came out that Jacoby Myers has been the steadiest, most interesting guy there. So I'm, I'm not really buying that one yet. Believe it when I see it type of thing with Nikhil Harry. Thunderman Peoples Jones absolutely lighting up Browns camp was another report. This guy has real speed. I mean, he is a player. There's no doubt about that. Um, last year, he only played, I think, 20% of the snaps uh, and saw only 20 targets, but he snagged 14 of them for 304 yards and a pair of touchdowns. To have two touchdowns on only 14 targets, to average 21.7 yards per reception and still catch 14 of your 20 targets. That's really, really good. 70% catch rate when you're getting targeted that deep all the time. It's kind of insane. So he's, again, similar to Diami Brown, like a best ball guy. Like you're probably not going to be able to predict when he goes off. But just a name, and if you're doing those deep under underdog or, or especially drafting where you get 20 picks types of drafts, just a name to kind of file away that could, could have a couple blow-up performances. And then just some injuries we got to cover and adjust for it. I don't love to – over adjust for training camp injuries, especially if they're going to be back. But there's some concerning ones. I think Galladay concerns me quite bad uh, to the point where I would put him below Robbie Anderson. He's expected to miss two to three weeks, probably will be back for week one, but a hammy. We saw this all last year. Even before he got hurt, they're saying the rapport between him and Daniel Jones wasn't looking very good. That Daniel Jones isn't looking very good. Shocker. <laughs> so Kenny Galladay. It gets a bump down, a decent size one. I I like Corey Sutton more. I do. So he falls for that. Devonta Smith also missing two to three weeks. And I'm not super, super concerned. But I don't like it when a rookie has to miss time. You got to get used to the playing on. They, I do like the fact that they came out from camp. He was so good before he got hurt. So pro-ready. Now, the coaching staff has no problem resting him the rest of the preseason if they need to because they have no questions about how this guy is going to look. And the receivers have been kind of a mess. Like Jalen Reger's done nothing to take over in his absence. Like Quez Watkins is apparently him and Fulgham are the best guys. So I, I'm not – I have to adjust a little bit for the injury because he might start a little slower now. I still think he could hit the ground running quite fast, so I'm not too concerned. Um, Curtis Samuel, though, that I am starting to get bugged out by this one. First, he had COVID. Now he has a groin injury, uh, and there's no timetable for his return. In his favor, he's played in Ron Rivera's system before. But I, I you, that can only get you so far, right? So I'm going to bump Curtis Samuel down. And I'm also going to bump Traquan. So why don't I move Traquan first? Because he's missed all the practices, and that's kind of what's let Marquez shine. Apparently, Traquan was looking pretty good when he was there. And it's not supposed to be like anything overly serious. So like he can stay right around there, but he doesn't belong in that other tier. And I think Curtis Samuel is going to get a bump down uh, to maybe right here-ish. Marquise Brown also has been hurt. 
throughout camp with a hamstring injury. So I, I he, I just don't like Marquise Brown that much. I, I'm over him after last year. He does what he does well, but I don't think it's ever going to be consistent fantasy production. Um, and then Bateman, as we talked about, undisclosed. We don't know what it is quite yet, uh, but certainly doesn't help that he is missing so much time. So we're just kind of adjusting for some of these injuries that we've seen so far. If they come back and they're looking great, we can always readjust. But if I'm drafting today, that's how I like to give you guys my rankings, then this is what I'm doing at wide receiver. What is up, you fantasy wolf? Thanks so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, share your thoughts in the comments. Check out some more videos and join the newest Wolfpack by subscribing below.